Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry we need to put you through another consecutive session of this dude, but hey, I'm just going to drive and we're going to let the, uh, the, 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 the Hogmeister and Miss Anne-Marie take over a lot of this situation, this, a lot of this session, a lot of this segment. Um, welcome both of you, Amory, always a pleasure. Uh, my last segment, I had my hometown behind me and I got your hometown here as a yeah. nice little shout out Birth for you. So, yeah, <laughs> Birth town. yeah, Port of Spain, yeah. right? So um, let's talk, uh, unless you have anything you want to start with, uh, say something off the bat, but I have a question of like, what the heck is going on with gold up and up and up and up and up and then just <laughs> gone is that typical I, i'd love to hear your your opinions on that stuff so but emory let's start with you so there's a there's a macro reason that gold is moving up the way that it is and there's also a macro reason that or or there's also a technical reason for it to come back into its support zones and so the macro reason is when the bank of japan adjusted their yield curve and said hey listen we're gonna have to raise rates and they raised them from negative to zero it created a buying opportunity for gold as the dollar continued to rise and their currencies continued to fall so a lot of the asia markets and a lot of the asia central banks are buying gold hand over fist the problem is at some juncture they go hmm, i think it's time that we pump the brakes right there and let's wait for a little bit for gold to come back in and we'll start buying again and so that's really what we've seen over the last maybe 14 to 20 trading days We had some days where we just sat and then broke out again. That's what we're likely to do. Sit sideways and then break out again, unless something in the broad macro picture shifts. But that's that's what's really happening in the machinery of why gold and gold futures are moving that way. The, the next thing is at some point, the speculators that continue to pump gold up finally say to themselves, hmm, might be a good time to feed the ducks. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what's happening today with an $80 move almost off the high that we had this morning. It's quite, like the, quite the jump in that, uh, John, if you can... Yeah, if you can add on to that, because are you qualifying this as just a, let's call it a pullback, because in the grand scheme of things over multiple, multiple days and weeks, it's up, 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 and then we have this, you know, this $80 drop. Would you consider this as not a pullback over the rest of what has been going on, or do you think this is a, the start of something new? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I think this is just a, a, a pullback. Um, the... The thing about pullbacks, and I've been warning people about this for years, is when you, when you have a good trend, whether it's upside or downside, when the pullback comes, it is usually vicious and fast. It's like all the bids got pulled out from underneath gold today and everything just went kaplooey, right? Yes, that is an industry term, kaplooey. Um, so... We haven't broken upside structure. I've, you know, I've been giving this this auction, the longer time frame auction on the daily chart, just by looking at volume and open interest changes. I've been giving it a B, maybe even a B plus um, for the better part of this. Yeah, this is necessary. This is something that that you know a, a directional market has to do from time to time. It's got to got to wash out the weak hand longs. It's got to wa It's got to give an opportunity for traders that are our holding positions in profit to, as Anne Marie put it, feed the ducks. Right. Um, and you know, this is when we got up to that 2440 weekly kickoff high up here, 2440. Okay. One of two things was going to happen in my opinion and, and in my hypotheses, 
we're either going to we're, we're either going to incite a whole new bunch of new buyers into the market that that are going to drive price higher or we're going to get up there and everybody's going to look around and say what's going on here and that quiet that when that happens you know that's when everybody says okay you know what it's time to take some money off the table they all turn sellers all the bids get pulled out from under it and bang what did what really happened today robert and Anne marie we uh we saw the overnight rally okay regular trading hours brought us to this important level we could we didn't bring new buyers in above that so that brought in the duck feeders <laughs> what, what happened we just basically brought price back to settlement closed the gap that was a gap close. That wasn't a major change in structure or market state. That was a necessary pullback. This pullback in gold could actually feed the next leg to the upside. Exactly. One thing we have to be worried about, though, is there is, you know, there's some some considerable downside structure that is weak down below. Naked point of control, naked point of controls, gaps, naked points of control. If this thing does turn around, it could come back and fill in all those weaknesses and structure pretty quickly, but I don't think we're there yet. I think, you know, today we've expended a lot of energy. We have fed a lot of ducks and you know, it's, a, it's one o'clock now. Technically gold is closed at 1230. It, it settles at 1230. It's probably going to settle right at, right at yesterday's settlement price. So was this a really big pullback? Was in the day time frame? was it a big pullback in the bigger time frame? No. No, Absolutely. it was just a vicious, vicious contrary move. And I've warned people for years, you know, we got a big trend going here. When it, when it, when it cracks, when, when the buyers run out, it's going to be a vicious move to the opposite side. And that's exactly what happened today. Absolutely. Uh, hundred percent agree. I think we're all in agreement with that. I don't know a heck of a lot about those moves. Um, as far as why and the reasons, like Emery was saying, like the, you know, the the Japanese market in the end and in the uh, uh, golden inch of the dollar and stuff, you guys have a lot more knowledge on that. But technically, looking at this, 100% agree, both of you, that it's devastating on the day. Eh, just a little blip in the road and a real, just a little tiny little connection correction. No longer time back. frame, right? And the longer time frame, yeah. So, but being an intraday trader, we we need to keep those longer time frames in mind, and then but focus on what is in front of us. Um, with, do you think with that just with being all said? This, go go ahead, Anne Marie, please. Robert, yeah, John, did you see anything in the TPO structure of gold that said? I know you gave it a B this morning, but when it began to break down, did you see um, any kind of failed auction come into play what did the tpo look like so that we can say to ourselves hmm you know maybe um maybe i should have seen this coming okay great question 2440 was weekly kickoff high right here these are there are i think four four tick TPOs. Look at the amount of time that was spent above it. Huh. Less than a half an hour. This presents itself as excess. This is a selling tale. And once the market went up there, came back down and closed one 30 minute bar back down below that 2440 level, you know, the, the, uh, the odds were that it's rejecting above that level. If you're long, get out. If you're, if you're, you know, if you want to try and catch the move to the downside, I mean, it's still some considerable risk, you know, to, to, if we were to take out this high, uh, you know, we're looking at, well, let's see here, 40 to 40. So, I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, we're looking at some considerable risk on that. But if you were able to find a way into this push to the downside, it just it just really just fell apart right back to where settlement point of control from the previous day. This was a just a, a kind of a normal pullback. So if there was something in the TPOs that we could have seen early in the session, it was the fact that 
we didn't spend a lot of time up above that weekly kickoff level, less than a half an hour. And, you know, in market time, that's a hiccup. That is, that's just a heartbeat yeah. to be able to, to, to not be able to hold that important level in a, in a half an hour. That was, you know, that was kind of indicative that uh, this was excess and this gives you the opportunity to limit risk. Although the risk was pretty, was relatively substantial and we're looking at, uh, you know, a pretty decent risk on that. And then, you know, the, and then the market just kind of turned and, and, and fell apart. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yes. Seeing those single TPOs like that is, is, is definitely an, an indication for just up, down, sticking around there, and then just, just filling that profile out. Um, and, and John, before I switch over to, back to Marie, can you talk about like the markets? I heard you say one time something about uncertainty. Would they like uncertainty? They dislike uncertainty in the markets. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, um, for sure. Um, so anything that is uncertain as far as economic conditions, geopolitical conditions are going to put investors um, on pins and needles, right? So, you know, here's, here's where we, here's where we are. And this is the S and P we've had, you know, we had a big, you know, upside trend since last October. Let's just get we on your chart. Oh, uh, that looks like gold. Whose chart are we? No, that, that, that's on my chart. They'll switch it up. Oh, that's yours. Oh, there we go. Sorry, there sorry, you go. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. So we had this, you know, big continuous rally since last October in the equities. We started talking, you know, early last week about, you know, just maybe finding an area to kind of pull back and, and rest for a while here. And that's, I think, what we've been doing. Two times this week, two days this week, weekly kickoff low 5180 offered pretty decent upside opportunities, especially yesterday, right? So we weren't, right, we weren't willing to give up this space here just yet, okay? Today, uh, you know, some new, um, uh, some new uncertainties, geopolitical uncertainties have, you know, reared their heads. And today we were unable to hold that weekly kickoff level. Um, we weren't able to hold yesterday's low. We weren't able to hold an important level. We have and still have extraordinarily high delta we're, we're up over we're up over 30,000 in positive delta now look at the 30 minute chart what would be standard or normal versus 30,000 well i mean when you look at the direction the overall direction of the day today it's to the downside yeah but our more aggressive traders are using market orders to buy and lift the offers but wow. price isn't going in that direction. <laughs> price is going the opposite direction. Now there was one, you know, decent move off of we the weekly kickoff 5180 level. That didn't hold. And at that time, I started putting into, into the chat uh because Dolby, uh, because uh Dakota and, and Jay were on, which was by the way, by the way, a great segment. Love watching yeah, uh, watching for those sure. guys. Um but I started putting in the chat, hey, we're starting to notice a delta divergence here. In other words, price was starting to move lower on increasing number of contracts traded on the offer, which are market order buys, but price isn't going in that direction. It's, it's kind of opposite of what you'd expect, right? I mean, if you have a lot of people using market orders to, to lift offers, you would expect price to go higher, but it wasn't. And once we took out that week, that weekly kickoff 5180 and we took out yesterday's low, that was, I think that was, that was it. You know, that was a, that was a good short. I mean, I have been traded live today. I've been really busy, but I, you know, I, I took, I took 30 points on a one lot in a combine on this. And where did it go to? 5154 is a naked point of control that goes all the way back the to the 6th of march never revisited so, let me ask you something i have been waiting all day to buy the dip is the es delta telling me that i might be wrong and we might have an afternoon flush typically 
you know, yes. that is that that would be a cautionary if I were starting to look for lawns. Demand really good trade location. Okay. Very good. So along right. those lines, uh, the same question there, uh, close to what uh, Amory, I almost said Marianne, sorry about that, Amory just said, yes, uh, John, the Delta, uh, the, the Delta with the market order is trying to lift the offer on that, right? The market's mm -hmm. coming down, but we have a whole bunch of buyers in. Do we know if those are, nobody's in the trade and the trader comes in and markets in on the long side, or do we know if they already had a short in and they're covering that short, are we able to see that? Because that would kind of make sense where everybody's driving the market down and all of these market orders are coming into the long side. You know, is, are they closing their shorts or do they just think, hey, buy the, you know, buy the dip, buy the dip, two-legged pullbacks or whatever you want to call it, support level, buy off of it and just losing. Do we have a way to, to tell the difference on those? You, you can't. However, ah. The fact that you know we have all this positive delta and price has been moving lower is an indicator of the potential for longer time frame, other time frame, big pockets traders selling, mm. selling. Mm. So if that is the case, either if the longer time frame traders are selling into new positions. If they're selling into new shorts, we should see a pretty big increase in open interest tomorrow morning. If we have a big loss in open interest, that would be potentially longer time frame, big pockets traders liquidating longs. Mm. Okay. Okay. It makes a little more sense. Uh, me and a group of traders, this is several years ago, uh, did this little experiment where we tried to figure out all of the retail, all of us little fish around here, if mm -hmm. all of us were long taking the futures market, we just took, we took the NQ, um, and all of us retailers were in a contract long, we put all of our money on the line and every single one of us is long. One dude at JP Morgan can just look at the button and go two billion short and wipe all of us out. Oh yeah. So basically, the math on that was just was astronomical. Like, wait a second, all these traders going like it was, it was really, really something. So that falls pretty much kind of in line with what you're saying. We got these deep pockets, these big hands, which are pushing, pushing, pushing. We're all just trying to stop, 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 stop that bleeding right. coming in here by marketing into it and just right. losing and just failing. So we're really right. interested to see what those open interest is going to be like, like yeah. tomorrow. So, and at the end of the day, if you know, in the S&P and the NASDAQ, which the NASDAQ has positive delta also. I'll tell you what that is right now. It's only 4,400 positive in the, in, the del, in, the, in the NASDAQ, but that's you know, pretty, still pretty substantial sitting here just off the lows. So in your, we're going to find out at the end of the day if our hypothesis is true, if we do have a lot of weaker hands traders buying into this break, trying to get the the the, the know get the bounce at the end of the day and if that doesn't happen or we put in new lows at the end of the day that's going to be your group of traders that are holding longs <clears throat> that want to get flat by the end of the day by the end of the week right. Right? right so that's when they may turn and turn this market and 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 you know bury it lower um yeah but you know as far yeah. as positioning of longer time frame traders we have to wait and see what the what the open interest looks like on on monday and there is no be great platform. There's no way to, to, to gauge no. that until we get the information from the exchange on, on Monday morning. It's going to be a great power hour. Emory, do you use Delta in your trading as well? I don't know how to use it effectively. So I always look to John for those sorts of things. And when the number gets big, I know that's my space to go. You better consider that because I've been looking for the dip to buy this morning um, and into the early afternoon. And then I saw John's Delta number and I went, rut row. Mm -hmm. So um, I got the, the feeling that I was possibly, you know, looking at the wrong side of things. Not, not to mention that all the weird news that we've had today, you know, some crazy news that says, you know, attack eminent or whatever. That's right. Iran does not want 
to focus at all. They have no desire to focus. Everybody's just chattering, but I think there's a little bit of fear that says, you know, why don't we just leave one short over the weekend? Like we heard talking about ago, right? Uh -huh. You just, there might be a tendency to go, hey, you know what? I think I might be a little flatter this weekend than I normally am, right? I know Mondays have been fairly bullish. Um, maybe this coming Monday, I, I won't. Plus it's tax day, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so that might... That, that that might be another uh, non-technical reason that we eventually could see a sell-off into the afternoon. So Well, and think about this. What has been the play for the since October pretty much on a daily basis? Uh, by see, weakness. Besides buy the dip? <laughs> buying the dip. Buying the dip. You know, a lot of people might be buying the dip here. And then go, uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to strip a lot of uh, gears if this thing doesn't turn around and head higher. You're not kidding. We could have an epic power hour. Just Indeed. have to. Okay, so let's frame out some numbers. If, if we were sitting, sorry to sidetrack you on this because I've got to turn my head all the way around because I've been thinking <laughs> the same thing by the dip. And if we're looking at this delta that could say, hey, you better pump the brakes on that thought and start thinking about what it might look on the other side. What kinds of recovery levels do you think will make the traders more? What do you have in your numbers that are going to make the traders in the ES more uh, thoughtful about saying, holy cow, I'm tired of buying the dip. I got to get out. Or holy cow, this might actually um, hold the edge and recover. So what edges do you see uh, sellers or, or buyers getting most nervous and buyers getting most hopeful? So we're just looking from the buyer's perspective if they go, oh, okay, I, I recovered this line. My thought would be the one minute high, the opening tick, but that is so stinking far away mm -hmm. that I have to look for something else. So maybe it's, I don't know, congestion low. Uh, what's the weekly kickoff low for? 5180. Yes. Okay. That's what we've, so, we've bounced off that several times in the last three days. Okay. So if we recover that, mm -hmm. there's a chance that the buyers will go, I'm re-engaging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to make, I'm going to put an alert there and see yeah. how that works. Okay. So let's take a look at what that number might be if it were the Qs if the buyers were to re-engage. And then if Delta ends up working out and things roll off a cliff, where okay. are they really gonna go? I gotta get out of here. Okay. So um, if we are looking for the NQ, what might we recover? What's weekly kickoff low in the NQ? 18,000. Whoa. <gasps> Okay. That's that's quite a ways. It's, that's quite a ways down there. But I mean, it's, the yeah, it's only 160 away right now. We're we're currently trading at 18,165. Uh, mm -hmm. So 18,000. It's only 160 points away. And we know we can do that in a minute or two. Is that funny that we can say that in the NQ? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just oh. <laughs> all right. These um, markets are something else. <laughs> So let's, where is, where's the line you think, and of course, you know, anything can happen, but if you're looking at uh, the NQ, where do you, I think that they, I think they'll hold that weekly kickoff low. I mean, if they, if they puke down there, they, sh they should end up holding that. Would you, would you estimate that? 
I would, I would think so. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a solid level, right? I mean, for six yeah. weeks, we've been in this range and then going back here, that's a low, that's a high, that's a high, that's a high, that's a high. That's just a kind of a, you know, a basic technical analysis level there, right? Yep. Yep. So, okay. I mean, we've got space to get even down there. Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, so let's, sorry to change gears on you, but let's go back to the ES and tell me where you think they'll go. Okay, I got to get out of here. What What is your thought about that? Which side? Um, If they go, listen, I've been trying to buy this dip and it's getting to be 330. Do you think that is more of a time-based decision or a price-based decision? On a Friday with this time much based. delta, in, uh -huh. you know, if this is if this is short time frame longs trying to you know buy the dip, and they don't get what they want, two thirty is going to be crazy. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, comment on the NQ. We're talking about that eighteen thousand level. I just did a quick look at a chart here. I just threw up a thirty minutes. Not we don't even need to go on my screen. Um, eighteen thousand is the last time we hit that. We we hit it uh, around March fifteenth, but it was it broke through as a resistance level uh, on February twenty first. So from February twenty first, it it was resistance and it broke through, came back down and bounced off on March fifteenth. So a month ago, roughly. Mm -hmm. And it tapped 18,705 twice. So from February 21st to today, we're between 18,000 and 18,700. You know, rough, rough figures right there. Mm -hmm. 700 points in the NQ. Now, those higher time frame traders, if we get down to that 18,000, what do you think about going long and Putting a target on eighteen thousand seven hundred and coming back in a couple of weeks. I know we can't do that, but just for the, uh, the outside <laughs> scope of things, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's I mean, a long time. That is a long time. To, a couple of I mean, months. Look at your back. chart there, Robert. We've yeah. been in that range for weeks. Yep. Weeks. For since February twenty first. Yeah. So the the that's the range. You know. The fact that we've been idling this long in the in the Nasdaq bodes very well for a, for eventually a breakout in one direction or the other. There's going to be a lot of energy yeah. behind that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now we're range bound, so we're selling against the high and we're buying against the low. I mean, look at the high today. Yesterday's high, basically weekly kickoff high, eighteen thousand five hundred. Today's yeah. high, eighteen thousand five hundred seven seventy five. Yeah. Where did it, <laughs> when did it come in? came in last night okay i mean that's where we got up to yesterday we hung there hung there all night no sign of acceptance above that level all night long the market opens today and then and then you know pushes back to the downside it took back that took back that uh that big day we had yesterday after the big down day we had the day before that this is this market is doing exactly what range bound markets do it's rotating low to high high to low we go back even further than that. Oops. February 21st. So, you know, here's high to low, low to high, high to low. Well, high, high to low, low to high, high to low. It's just rotating back and forth in here. There's no, there's no major players in this, if you ask me, because there's no direction to it. They're just kind of hanging around, adjusting their inventories day over day, and... Just kind of hanging around. What I don't like for longs is the fact that, for the most part, we're staying below yesterday's regular trading hour range, low. Mm -hmm. I just put, well, I want to ask Amory something here, but I just put on a volume profile on my NQ chart starting from February 21st, where we had this whole range, and there it is on the screen now. Yeah. That point of control for that whole area is 18,280, roughly. But look how the look where the peaks are. We have our value area high, eighteen five oh six. Value area low, eighteen one fifty three. So we are right smack. I will highlight this so the traders can see it if they can't see it on their chart. 
Uh, you highlight we're at the value area low right now. Absolutely. Yeah. For starting back <clears throat> from when this range happened, we're at the, right at the value area low. A little bit room to the downside to uh, to go. But looking at that that rotation on these, you can see how once we started getting closer to the top, and I'm talking the top of the current value area high, right around eighteen thousand five hundred. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a peak in volume. We had it. We had it. We had to branch out. So if I do a a drawing on this on the left side of the screen there, I'm going to draw just the shape of our volume profile. There's a peak. In case traders can't see it, might make it a little clearer on the chart. But there we go. Right that on. is our volume profile, just like that. Okay, and we are highlighting the yellow area. The highlighted. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, clicked a little bit too quickly. I do that a lot. Um, yeah. And the the uh, tan area there is the uh, value area of this entire uh, this entire range from, from February 21st. Those mm -hmm. are, I, I, I don't know, in my opinion, I'm not a very long-term trader like that, but just looking at this as a visual side of things, if we come down to around this 18,000 start going up again, I'm going to start looking at 18,290-ish, uh, or 18,300 in that range for some trades. That's a 300 point range it's up to that point of control where it's significantly greater volume than mm -hmm. the next highest peak. So our next highest peak is it, the point of control. The next highest peak is at the value area high. And that is quite a distance. It's going to have a, some drive to get through that point of control area before it keeps going up. So we'll have to see what happens in the markets. Um, economically and geopolitically to see if this thing is going to kick around on us. Uh, Emery, I had a question for you on the on the gold side as we saw it take off. Maybe, sure. uh, we're talking about a lot of diversion stuff going on here. Um, how about diversions and or confluence between uh, the commodities and the equities? For example, I've seen for a long time now that equities are going up, gold is going down, you know, dollars up, gold is down and so on back and forth. Uh, it didn't happen today. Gold kept going up and up and up and up and up. And then the equities markets were dropping, 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 dropping. And then gold dropped on it. But the equities didn't come back up again. So do you have any comments on that as to why that might be? Because typically there's a little bit of divergence going there. You know, the dollar goes up, yeah. gold goes down. And it, didn't, well, it didn't happen the last yeah. couple of days. And there have been gold and the dollar have been fairly dislocated for the last little bit. If you take a look at the dollar and you take a look at gold, you can see the dollar is basically holding support, but not moving lower. Whereas gold has just continued to rocket to the upside. Again, I think it's a currency risk event that's occurring. Um, and that currency risk event is what we talked about. And so as long as there is some sort of fundamental pressure forcing uh different central banks into gold there's going to be disconnections that we don't normally see when we're moving in uh a, a tandem or not synchronous but some kind of relationship whether it's yeah. inverse or or whatever it's it's going to break until those pressures squeeze just a little bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, what, so I think, and you know, we talked about this actually maybe two strategy labs ago. Um, the markets are moving at the beat of their own drum, different ones. We know that if uh, normally, if we hear saber rattling from across the pond, we see the uh, oil really cresting higher. But with all the news and the noise, oil is holding higher, but it's not breaking out. It's still no. in a general upward trend that's got no fear attached to it. And fear can appear in gold and oil very dramatically mm -hmm. uh, because it's uh, one is a fear of war and disruption of uh, transport. And another is fear of uh, currency devaluation, and that's huge. The yen is in a ton of trouble, and it looks like the um, 
yuan is going to have to make some of those changes also. So while that's happening, oil, uh, gold is going to be disjointed. And, you know, I'm, I would like to say I am not surprised about oil fading, but I, well, maybe I'm not, it should be on the Mm. rise, but there's a geopolitical uh, or a general political event going on. And that's an election cycle. And if oil continues to move higher, I mean, I'm paying almost $5 a gallon for premium, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so as that continues higher, you're going to see consumer sentiment take a dip and that's why it took a dip today right one of the main reasons that consumer sentiment looked the way that it did is really those pressures and so try not to look at the markets moving together as much because i think they're really disjointed look at them individually and try not to trade in pairs right now i think Pairs trading, and by pairs trading, I mean, uh, you know, long equity short the dollar, or short, short oil long the dollar, or whatever it is. Don't mm-hmm. don't trade those relationships because of what you think is showing in the past. Uh, I think the markets are way too messy right now. It's a gigantic Gordian knot. Okay, so what you're what you're saying is, I mean, a lot of the correlations that people would be leaning on in the past are just not holding. They're going to break. They have been breaking. Mm-hmm. They have been breaking, and so trade the instrument you're trading, and don't fret about anything else. Look at this; mm-hmm. it's come right down. We're at the almost at the lows of yeah. the day. What is Delta saying? 27,000 positive. Okay, so it continues to rise. Yeah, well, it's about we a just thousand took off higher about 3, than you 000. said. Okay. We just took off about 3,000 on this move down. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was up around 30,000 before. Oh, okay. All right. Yikes. So, I mean, yeah, right? Right, and yeah. it's it's almost, you know, it's, it's getting pretty late in the day here. If, the, yeah. if all these longs are starting to get nervous... If that's the case, you know, if if this delta, if this divergence is telling us that short time frame traders have bought this dip and they don't get what they're looking for, they're mm. out. They're out. Yeah, the bottom mm-hmm. falls away from it. Yeah, yeah. but it's going to be tough, choppy. Look how thin the dome is. Yeah, this market is very thin. Very thin and very uncertain, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll show you something on this NQ chart, uh, you guys, and then we're going to jump into something else here. I just plotted the last six days volume profile on each individual day uh, inside of the value area. So for context, mm. the mm. that orange colored box there is the value uh, area from, from way back when, from way back on the, the 21st when we started this whole mm-hmm. range. And, and there it is back there. You can see it on the left-hand side, okay? So we're going to follow this point of control from way back then. It's around uh, 18,280. That's the center one. I'll make this so you everybody can see it pretty cleanly. So there we are. So this uh, point of control, I'm having my, I will, uh, let's give it a little bit of a circle. So that's the one that I'm referencing right there. That's the one from way back when, okay? Uh, these others, if we look at these one, two, three, four, five, six days, this there's only one day, one, two, three days ago, so April 8th to 9th, where the actual point of control is right where we are now. So that's where it was mm-hmm. hung out. And that's where that's mm-hmm. the one, that's that point of control. It wasn't a naked point of control because we've broken through it. But look right. at the value area of all of the last five or six days here. They're just about the exact same. I will do a quick drawing on this too. You can see and, them. And, yeah, that's, and that's they, interesting. And dragging along the bottom of the longer time frame area of value. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is so what does that tell us? That tells us, in my opinion, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna here's our speculation that if we come around this eighteen thousand one hundred, eighteen thousand area we're looking for, and 
it starts to hesitate and starts to curl back up. I'm looking at 18, I'm looking at this bottom point of control, 18,000, you know, 160 ish. And we'll just take the, our runs back up there. And if we get out of that and we get through these low value areas between 206 to 250, right in that area, that 50 point swing, I think we're going up even a little bit higher to around 300. So basically to, in a nutshell, if we don't drop under 18,000, I'm looking at 18,300 with a slight delay, delay around 18,200. That's kind of my hypothesis and it's on record here. I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, it's speculation, right? But that's what I would see. My hunch is that we drop 18,000 and we cave in a little bit due to everything that else that's going on with all the prices going up and gold doing its thing and geopolitical stuff. So that's my guess. Anybody want to add to that? Um, well, my thought would be if we do drop to 18,000 or I have the number 18,050, that's okay. uh, a weird little number that I have there. And if we drop to that uh, zone and collapse under it, and then recover it, I'm inclined to think about going long there and seeing if we can walk the way up. Now, what I noticed was, and I'm going to use uh, Dolby as an example because it was a, a really great trade mm -hmm. that just required a little more patience. And it happens at the bottoms of cycles. So on the Dolby thought about buying the dip in the YM, I think it was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And he got stopped out and then he changed and started thinking about going short and then, you know, whatever. But the original trade was based on a very big line that you could really see on the day and the week and also the four hour where he was building the trade from. And what mm -hmm. I have noticed from my experience is that those areas are taking time to resolve and they're going to break down and they're going to hold up and they're going to break down and they're going to hold up. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they'll take five, six hours to rotate and hold mm -hmm. themselves well before they move up. Or sometimes they'll take as little as two hours but they do take time. And so the big takeaway from a strategy perspective for us is when you start focusing on trading those daily or weekly or four hour levels, remember they don't respond like five minute charts. They take time because there are people on both sides going, this is going to collapse. I'm shorting it. And people on the other side going, I'm taking it long and I don't care. And so, and they all have tight stops right. because they're saying, Hey, I don't want to put a lot at risk. This is a cheap trade and it either works or it doesn't, but I'm going back to the well because it's a big time frame level. It's a level that we can see over those days, weeks, and four hour formations. So that's a really, uh, sometimes I lose sight of that. And when I lose sight of the fact that trading a daily level means that it's going to have slosh right there as people resolve, that's a really, really, really important takeaway. And Maria, uh, we used to say on the on the floor if we were in like a position in a you know an important level and it just wasn't moving, it's like trying to turn a battleship around in port. Exactly. It just takes time to turn it and then eventually it's going to go. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Bostic just came out with some news here. Uh, Fed's Bostic, uh, he says, my 2024 outlook is one rate cut toward the end of the year. Mm. And I don't know mm. what that means, but it sounds it's serious. Not in a hurry to cut rates. <laughs> yeah. You know, not in a hurry. Uh, that, yeah. The, the problem is the chair wants to cut rates. And his last conversation was, listen, we have two rate cuts coming. And so what he's hoping for is market data that tells him it's okay. But I mean, he literally said that the last time he was talking. 
hey, we're mm-hmm. going to have two rate cuts this year. So, and- you know, I, I don't even know what's going to, I think it's going to be bad in the long run uh, because it's going to uh, make inflation get stickier again. Mm-hmm. But the question is going to be, does that make us get to a new high somehow? Because everybody goes, woohoo, it's begun. Right. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's, it's really, that's well, super we interesting. started about this conversation off about how it's, uh, markets are disjointed. Gold is doing funky things with these pullbacks. And uh, uh, we're stuck in a range on the NQ and the ES for weeks. Um, and it's an uncertainty and we Marcus don't like uncertainty. That's true. So it, exactly. It's going to be, a, it's going to be a bit, you know, I, I hate to say it's going to be a choppy market because the ranges are big intraday. We'll have some bounce around, but we're looking at this thing. We're I am looking at the, you know, NQ with these big swings, you're talking, you know, four five, 600 points a day up and then I a day know. down the day up, I right? Know. That's, that's, been that's, insane. that's quite bad. it's not like the COVID times, but it's still, it, it's still ranging but a wider range which has given us a further uncertain level we'll get, like that hope like that nah i'm not liking that i was going to bring it back down again it's getting a little no well, okay we'll get some good stuff and bring it back up again but um in gold yeah. going nuts the way it was going on uh john you have anything to add uh, i think you had one more question there if you want to pull something out of the book this uh that you read well the Fast markets this morning. I think there was some really good conversation about this. This is Anne Marie's book, by the way. If you haven't bought it yet, you you gotta buy it. It's an excellent trading book. Um, and there's chapter four in here is a good chapter that uh, that you know I've, I've I've read this book a couple of times. And uh, chapter four is trading well is not only about trading systems. Dolby. Uh, uh, Dakota is so good at just like, you know, looking at the charts and seeing a level that he wants to take a trade. And then he just lets it go. A lot of folks, young traders, new traders, old traders alike, they attach a lot of of emotion to it. And he seems very emotionless. Um, Anne-Marie, can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, why trading well is not only about a trading system? Um, so, you know, in in the trading takes us through a metamorphosis of our personality, right? And so we have these points in time where we learn about the markets and then we learn about ourselves. But if we are to take Dakota as an example, and I, I know he probably hates the spotlight shining on him that much because he's such an even keel guy. It's not that he doesn't feel, it's that he trades with a lack of self doubt. And this is his superpower, really. Because mm-hmm. if you or I had, I don't know, isn't his, 30, his win rate like 30, 40%? It's low, right? Something I like mean, that, right? Look, yeah, it's low. If you or I had a chair that we loved and it sat on, you know, a bunch of broken glass and only 30% of the time the chair held us, would we jump into the chair every single time we <laughs> we saw an opportunity to sit down? And the answer Very would well be put. no freaking way. But somehow Dakota has built this natural confidence where the bottom line for him is this. He does not equate a bad trade or trade that didn't work out well to him being a bad trader. Right. And that allows him to go, you know what? I'm going in there. And when I see the pocket, I'm throwing that ball. And that is that critical space. And so a lot of people who are in the trading game early in the game, they go, I don't care about any of that psychology stuff. I just want to know about the strategies. Just tell me Mm -hmm. where to buy and sell. And you know, the only person that says that is a person who has not been in the thick of it, who's not been down and feeling the pinch 
of being in a losing trade or who just hasn't had enough reps in the business. And so when I say trading is not just about systems, it really is about managing the self. And when we watch somebody like Dakota and we go, eh, realize that he has separated his trading from who he is as a young man. I am not the product of what it is that my trading account says. That's why it'll take millions and millions of dollars for Dakota to get a big head. It, trust me, it's going to come wherever it is. Everybody's <laughs> got their threshold. His is just <laughs> exceptionally high because he's a very grounded and centered young person. Uh, when we look at him and we go, wow, he's emotionless. What he's really is acting completely outside himself. Hey, this is a trade. If it doesn't go well, I'm not going to mm -hmm. look at myself in the mirror and go, you know, you suck. I'm going to go, all right, on to the next one. I mean, this is a game of probabilities. And so this weekend, when you, when you look at yourself and you go, why am I not taking these trades, it boils down to the same thing. The fear of being wrong is the primary one. And then when you're wrong, you go, well, I suck. Obviously, I, I don't even know how to make a decision here. <laughs> and so these the fear of being, and you know, Charles Schwab has so many wonderful quotes about overcoming personal fear. He's quite what an amazing individual, really, because he talked about encouraging people and how admonition worked as a terrible uh, motivator for people. If you build them up in an encouraging environment, they have much further on their uh, runway sure. than if you bring yeah. them up under admonition. But he says a lot of stuff about overcoming fear, and this is the... You have to think, my husband is one of the most fearless people I've ever known in my life. He's a very cautious person, but he's incredibly fearless. And so he says to me, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, what's the worst right. thing that could happen? Well, you know, you mm -hmm. lose 300 bucks. Okay. What's the best <laughs> right. thing that could happen? Yeah, well, that's the, that's I make 700 bucks. Uh, right. Okay, then. <laughs> Seems like the decision's been made. And that, that is what I, I want you to, to look at. Just say, hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? And if your answer is I blow up my account, uh, cut your size down. Simple answers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We just have to embrace the unknown rather than going, and then, you know, don't, don't be afraid of, of looking dumb. I mean, who cares what anybody else thinks? Really? Right. Who cares? Always do it to yourself. You said some great stuff in there, and, and Dakota does appreciate it uh, for sure. We're going to wrap up this session here and coming up with Power Hour. One thing you said, Anne Maria, I want to touch on is that you said something really good is look in the mirror. I'm doing this this weekend for my micro account, and I'm looking at charts. I'm looking at the mirror because I think you've seen the following us, or a couple of us are doing this whole discipline type of challenge. And I need to make some major adjustments. My, my day training is, is fine, but in this particular challenge, this discipline with these higher time frames and micros and all that stuff, I can look at myself. So I'm doing exactly what you said this weekend. I'm not going to look at them and say, you suck, you can't trade this types of accounts. I'm going to say, what is going on with this? And, and getting me out, what am I going to look at objectively yeah. without exactly. beating yourself up too bad? You know, Because it's not the strategy. It's not the instrument. It's not the time. So, yeah. And it, it goes to you. So you have to define it. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Look at some charts, take a break, look in the mirror, come out Monday fresh, and hopefully I have some more answers. Great. A pleasure always. We are running out the time. Uh, John, I, I, man, I love you, man. It's, I have a love hearing all of these things. He I learned awesome. so much today. I took you a couple of notes. So awesome. And Anne Marie is always a pleasure. There's your birth right up there. We are getting ready right now for Andres taking over the helms and driving the ship, driving, driving, he's sailing, he's driving the boat, driving the car, whatever he's doing. He's the driver. Jovi's going to be on in. Smiling Jack, 
Max Maserati. Uh, great guy as well. Hope you stick around. We are yeah, coming up next be fun. with Power Hours. Should be a real good session. Stick around.